What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here. We got a Tottenham update video to bring to you today. Some really interesting information we got mm. uh, after we brought you update yeah, yesterday. No, no targets yesterday. We have no <laughs> targets, no targets. <laughs> now it seems as though targets are flowing. <laughs> Left, um, right and centre. <laughs> let's start off with the, the talk of the town, Gareth Bale. Um, it's reported from the Telegraph yesterday, Real Madrid are just ready to cut ties with Gareth Bell and they're even willing to give 50% of the wages. Now this is music to our ears, isn't it? Exactly, this is what I've been saying. I said something had to give this yeah. summer. I said this in a few videos ago. I was like, if we're going to sign Bell, now is the time because mm -hmm. surely two years now he's been sitting on the bench doing absolutely nothing. He's just collecting all this money. They blocked his move to China because they thought he's, they're better off having him um, trying to contribute to the team. He didn't contribute to the team. So now they've been burnt for a whole year. Yeah. Surely something has to give. He needs to be playing football again if he's, you know, going to be fit and firing for the Euros and be happy again. He's how much golf could one play? You know, he's got, he's, he's got to surely. Now's the time. He's thirty-one. Yeah, he's not getting any younger. Golf courses in Tottenham. <laughs> <laughs> he look, he's not. I'm sure Levy can make one in the stadium. Someone on the roof or something. Get a mini golf on the skywalk. I thought I saw them building something new on the roof yeah. or up on the skywalk. <laughs> sure, Levy never misses an opportunity, does he? But um, he look, can play, he can play golf while. While abseiling down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's not getting any younger. He's 31 now. Mm. He really, if he really doesn't want to look back in his career and think, why did I you waste the last five of my years just sitting on the bench and not, not trying to achieve something? Now's the time to move. And you look around the Premier League, who's really going to, uh, who really needs him, right? Well, who really is going to stump up the cash? It was interesting because you know those guys on Twitter, the Transfer Exchange Show. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know how reliable or not they are, but <clears throat> they seem to call some information quite early as opposed to some other publications. And what they said about Gareth Bell last night is that um, after this news came out from the Telegraph, it's put a number of Premier League clubs on high alert. And when I thought about it and I was like, who's he more suited to to join Tottenham on? Who, who else apart from Tottenham would he like to join? Man United, looks like Jadon Sancho is going to be over the line. Mm -hmm. Arsenal, not even in the question. Uh, Chelsea doesn't look like it because they've just made loads of signings and I, I think they're well stocked in those areas. The only one I could think of was Man City. You think City? I think I think it's they just City. signed. They just signed Torres. Yeah, but they signed Torres. Who knows if he's going to hit yeah, the ground running? Yeah, they've got Sterling, they've got Silva, and they've got Mares. Where's, where's yeah, they? Well, they're, 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 you really think they're going to splash money on Bale? Yeah, it's Man wanted? City. They're owned by bloody I don't country. Think... If they're if they're talk about them signing Messi, why wouldn't they go for Bale for a year or two? Because I don't think anyone could because of Bale. Like we, I think we're the only club in in a position where it's worth the risk for us. I don't think it is for City. I think I, it's worth the risk for City just because that financially they're not in the same position as us. They can throw uh, wages at Gareth Bale and it won't affect them. And if they, if it doesn't work out after one year, send him back. Yeah, but I, I don't think they will. I just don't think Pep is... I don't know. I, I see where you're coming from. I just don't think they will. I, I think they'll look at Bale and, and think, look, he's uh, he's been off the boil. He hasn't played for two years. You know, his injury record is not great. And it, and for us, we've got better players. So why put all that money? But for us, in our position, it's like we've... We, we, he, Bale's like a cult hero at our, at our place, and he would really he could really be a star in the team if he came. It's not the same for City, I don't think. Yeah, but when also when you look at it for Man City, they just got battered in the league by Liverpool. They need to do anything they can to get up and close that gap between Liverpool and signing Gareth Bale is a great step to that. Maybe, maybe I maybe I could see where you're coming from. I don't think they would. I just I, I just think they wouldn't do it. I, I think I, that I, I think that as it stands, we are more likely to sign Gareth Bale. I yeah. think. But if Man City come in, it's something yeah, that you look, have to consider. If Man City come in, then that's it. But I think, you know, he's just sat on the bench for so long at, at Madrid. He's really going to want to sit on the bench again for, for, for Man City. Well, if you're talking about him against Mares or Bernardo Silva, surely you're picking Gareth Bell on on form Gareth Bell. I don't think so. Why not? Morris is class, and so is I, I'm not saying silver. they're not class, but Gareth Bell at his pomp yeah. against them at their pomp. Yeah, you, but why? Gareth Bell every time. Yeah, I agree with that, but I don't think I, I don't think Pep is gonna so when he's got Bernardo and 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 Mares in that position. I don't I don't see the reason for him to be signing Bale because it's, it's just a better option. Run. It's not necessarily though, but it could be a better option. It could it's be a risk, that, and they've got Torres there. In I there think as well. it's a risk that's probably worth taking for Pep. If, in my opinion, in my opinion, maybe, but I think Pep will probably look at it and think, and think it's not. I reckon. Um, I reckon he will decide against it. Well, we'll see. Like, obviously, I'm I'm dying for him to join Spurs, and I think that 
for the first time since he's left, this is the most realistic option of him coming back. Yeah, if they were apparently they're reportedly willing to um, pay fifty percent of his wages, Real Madrid. That's the report to get him off the to get him off the wage and bill, and get it, him off, get him out. I think it completely makes sense as well because when players come, they usually do have a signing on fee, and at fifty percent of his wages, if we spend two hundred grand on his wages and give him a three million uh, signing on fee, that's fifty percent of his wages. Mm. So I think it really does make sense, and I think financially viable for Tottenham. So maybe maybe this could be the year that uh, we'll talk well, obviously we haven't really heard from you know anyone close to Spurs that uh, this is actually in the pipeline or imminent or, or even if we're in for him but that, the rumours are they're willing to pay 50% of the wages um, to get him to get him out of the club and rumours that Tottenham are interested but there's nothing really concrete just as of yet of, of that we're going to actually sign him and as well I was speaking to Mark uh, Ben Amram sports, uh, the Spurs Express uh, a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about Daniel Levy gets obsessions in his head. One obsession was this stadium, mm -hmm. and he got that over the line. Another obsession was Mourinho, where he had an obsession with Mourinho for a long time, and finally he got his man. And another obsession of his is bringing Gareth Bell back to Tottenham, apparently. So it really could be one that could uh, come know. over the line. But I really feel like if we're not, if it doesn't happen this summer, it will never happen. Because I think, because if he gets to 32, 33, yeah, it's like no point. But at 31, I think he's just about the age where it's still worth it I to get him in. He's got one or two seasons left at the top. And I think that hopefully top. if he get if he comes to Tottenham gets a, a renewed sense of motivation maybe uh, and you know he shakes off some of the injury problems he could be for a second window really Mate. a twilight of his career. Mate, imagine Son Kane Bale. Oh man. That's man. a title winning front three it's surely. It is. I think that really is that that, that can compete with any front three uh, out there. I know you got Salah Mane for Firmino which is obviously unbelievable. And look the the top teams have amazing front threes but when you put when you stack up Kane Son and Bale up against that you th you think I'm not saying it's better, but it definitely is up there. It's definitely comparable. So that would be something different class. I think it's potentially the best top three in a premiership. I really do. When you put, when, I don't know, like Mane and Salah are absolutely unbelievable, but mm. you would say that Kane's better than Firmino. Yeah. Firmino. You would say Son, yeah, Mane's better than Son, but is there that much in it? Um, I, I, think, the, I think he is. Because they're both in the top three wingers in the Premier League. Yeah. So I think he's. I know fairly... Mane. Mane is better, but is he that much better? Like he's not another level, but mm. he's. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know if he's another level to Son, but he's... and then and then on the right hand side, Bale against Salah. Yeah, I think Salah's Salah's gets more goals and more, and he's probably you know he gets he's fitter a lot more. So you always take Salah. You would take Liverpool's front three still, I think. Yeah, you're probably right, but it's I comparable. Think, yeah, it's comparable, and it's also comparable. It's probably better than City's as it stands. Yeah, with, with Aguero's injury problems. But then you get Sterling, Mares, Bernardo Silva. Sterling's class, he's going to get 25, I mean, 30 goals. Forgetting as well, Steven Bergwijn, Lucas Moura on the yeah. bench as well. <sighs> Jack Clark. You know, Jack Clark. <laughs> but yeah, look, um, I, I'm not getting too excited just yet, but I think this I is... <laughs> yeah, I think we, we all are. But I think this is the... Oh, this, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen this summer. Mm. So... Watch this space. Get it over the line, Daniel. Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, next up, we're going to be talking about Pats and Dakar. Alice the Gold uh, mentioned on Football London and on Twitter last night that Tottenham uh, have an interest in Pats and Dakar. He's been heavily linked as well earlier in the window to Liverpool and Arsenal, mm. uh, which is very interesting. I had never heard of him before yesterday, tell you the truth, but I've looked into him and he looks like one that looks like a really good player. Yeah, really good player. and he really fits the profile of what we want. He's young. He's a big, strong lad. He's six foot one. He's twenty one years old. He's a, he's a Zambian international. So uh, you know, uh, really we, quick we, well. we were losing for the African Cup of Nations. But yeah, I think he has a lot of pace. I saw him a couple of times play for Salzburg in the Champions League last season. Obviously, my focus is more on Haaland. But he had a few minutes and he looked okay. Um, I think this is a would be a real statement signing of a sign of a backup striker in my opinion. I think he got 25 goals last season in the Austrian league. I know it's the only Austrian league, but you know we I think it was like 26 and 31 or something like that. Yeah, which is quite impressive. And and Haaland was signed based on his impressive form in the Austrian league. Speaking at Haaland, he only he he only played 14 games in in the Austrian league. Pretty yeah, much. and he scored 16 goals, yeah. so he completely smashed it out. Um, so Dakar, look. 
apparently he, um, they, they've already rejected bids early in the window of 40 million so whether there's actually a start a starter or a non-starter remains to be seen if we can get a good deal for him i think that he could be the perfect one really mm. uh the, the, with his um ceiling to improve as well apparently he can also cover on the wing if need be so i think this could be a real good signing but whether um we could actually get him for a price which we're willing to pay it's the way it remains to be seen i mean i would like I said, I hadn't heard of him before yesterday, but now I'm convinced we need him. <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm sort of amazing on 24 hours. We have, all of a sudden, we had no targets. Now we've found the perfect one. I remember I'm speaking nowhere. to you about it yesterday, and I was like, who is this guy? And then mm. last night, at like one in the morning, I messaged you, we need this guy. <laughs> <laughs> we have, okay, we have it. I'm sold, I'm sold. We have three YouTube compilations later, <laughs> exactly. and that's it. We need oh, him in. I get sold way too easily on these <laughs> But yeah, but look, we need a backup striker, and... Um, if we do splash out on him, I think that shows the ambition of Levy. It would be interesting because, you know, if we do get him for around like 30 million, which is the same as what Ollie Watkins went for mm. at 24 years old, would you say it's a better deal? I think so. I think so. Um, I, I, I just think it's one that really is we need to get over the line. I think Alistair Gold, last time he said something like this about a player was Matt Doherty and we signed him a few days later. Yeah, pretty so much. have so. to wait and see. Maybe, you know, if we have been keeping ourselves low down and, and when then we pounce on a deal like this, it'll be quite impressive. But I, I have a feeling we might be priced out of this deal. Yeah, more than likely. Um, another striker who's been hot in the press the last couple of days is uh, Milik, the Polish striker Milik. Um, reports in Italy claim that Spurs are actually the favourites to get this deal over the line. He's got one year left in his contract. Um, Juventus and, Rom and Roma deals apparently are dead. Yeah, and I think this one could be a really good option for us. I think I think the longer this one go, interesting enough, I think the longer the longer this one goes on in the window, I think the more likely it is to happen. Yeah, I think a bit similar to Gareth Bale as well, because I I think Gareth Bale it's a, it's one that's gonna if it's gonna get done, it'll be a last day of the window job mm. of Gareth Bale. Um, and I think it could be the similar one with Milik. I th yeah, I think the reason for with, for this with Milik is I think Napoli are probably demanding like twenty five thirty million. But the longer it goes on with no suitors, and you know everyone else gets their striker situation sorted out, if uh, if by if near the close of the window they're still not they still haven't sold him when they need to, the, their price will drop, and that's where we'll pounce. Yeah. So I think at the moment I don't think we'll it's gonna, anything that's going to be wrapped up right, right away. But with Juve and Roma pulling out, if they if they get their striker um, strikers sorted for the end of the window. Uh, and he's still available, I think that's one we might pounce on. Which I think, because Gozzi has one year left of his contract. Yeah, they're going to be forced to sell at some point. Exactly. So I think we could get a cut price deal. The only thing I'm worried about, actually, I didn't know this. I knew I knew he had one ACL injury um, on, on his right knee. I didn't know he actually had another one on his left knee as oh, well. Really? He's had two ACL injuries, which is a big worry. Mm. Um, and the, the bad thing about ACL injuries is you're actually not, you, they're actually quite a high chance of reoccur like reoccurring injuries because of it. Um, and it also comes down to fatigue. But if he's going to be backup striker, it might be not might not be too much of an issue. And he still does have quite a good scoring record and a, and fairly decent appearance record in the last couple of years. So where you know, obviously, if he passes the medical, then it's all good. But um, that is something quite yeah. worrying. Two yeah, a two a bloody medical team. Who knows yeah, true, what's going on? true. But two ACL injuries is uh, not something that that's that can't be brought up. I mean, when I'm stacking the three strikers we're properly linked with at the moment, Daka, Milik. And uh, Diallo. Uh, Diallo, yeah. I think for me, the top in in this order, I would want Patson first, Diallo second, Milik third. I You'd think, rather Diallo over Milik? I think so, yeah. Interesting. Why? Why do you think that? I just think it's a different option. I think he's pacey. I think um, Hab Diallo offers a lot of leadership qualities as well. It's leadership. Not, yeah, he's been captain a lot for Mets in the last year. Um, so it's a different style of player. I think Milik has never really sold me. I know he gets quite a few goals, but I don't think he gets as many goals as the others. I think Milik, as a technical striker, might be the best of the lot in terms of finishing, like his first touch, that kind of stuff. His technique when he's shooting, I think he might be the best. But in terms of physicality, um, he's probably he probably is the, what, n the number three in that. And I was watching Poland the last few games, and he didn't even get in the side. They're picking Piatek over him. Mm. Maybe, yeah. So maybe... And, you know, we were linked with Piatek, and we didn't even excite us. Yeah, Piatek was a bit one like... Uh on and off I wasn't yeah. so sure about him but um, 
I think I think this I'm one is. So fast about Milik. I think this one is not going to happen until late in the window for, uh, for if we haven't got our targets and the other teams as well. And as well, we we can't wait till then to get a striker in. We need one right now. Yeah, but we're not going to get one right now. So like, what are we going to do with these Europa League games? Care about like we're just going to have to rotate Kane and Kane. <laughs> 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 Call back Troy Parrott for yeah. God's sake. Well, he's injured. Well, he's as injured well, as well. I have to play uh, who else we've got Cameron Lancaster is he still available no uh, what's the guy <laughs> that played in the preseason that 16 year old striker oh uh, um, not Alfie Devine D- Dane D- <laughs> yeah. Alfie Dane not Alfie Dane no, Al- Dane something Dane <laughs> Dane Scarlet Dane Scarlet, Dane Scarlet. Uh, yeah get him in he actually looked quite good in the friendly <laughs> um, but there's another option yeah there is another option <laughs> the beautiful game podcast he, uh, he was on their podcast actually and uh, they've claimed that we're looking at Rian Brewster. Yeah, which um, they get quite a few exclusives, actually, the Beautiful Game podcast, especially with people they've had on the podcast. They actually, um, a lot of the time, do follow-ups and get exclusives on their transfer um, news. They did it with Eze. They called like, the Eze news quite early. With Rian Brewster, they said apparently he's looking to leave, and apparently uh, a number of clubs are interested, are interested in signing him, including Tottenham. However, a sticking point is apparently Liverpool are refusing to sell him without a clause in the contract. Which ha- which gives them a buyback clause. I can't see this one happening, to be honest. I really can't. Uh, Rian Brewster, um, he was talking in that podcast as well. I don't know if you heard any of it, but I heard a few snippets, and he was saying that he wants first team opportunities at Liverpool this season. He's he's looking to play a lot at Liverpool, score a lot of goals. That's why he wants to leave. I think. Yeah, he's probably not going to get it. Yeah, I know. That's why he wants to leave. But he's not getting that at Tottenham either. Yeah, he's definitely back. Well, how old is he? Eighteen, nineteen. He's, he's young. Yeah, he's, so he's he, he did young. well at Swansea last season. On he loan, did. But I'll, He's the kind of guy where, like, I wouldn't, I would quite like signing him, but like, I think first of all, we have that kind of striker in Troy Parrott, uh, and secondly, is he the guy we really want to be our backup striker going into the I season? Think, I think uh, Brewster goes to a top end Championship side or a lower end um, Premier League side. I, I just can't see him. I think maybe he goes back to Swansea or something. And there's one thing, and uh, Bournemouth, one, Bournemouth like spending their money on Liverpool rejects. And there's one thing I guarantee you right now: we are not buying anyone from Liverpool if there's a clause in the contract for for a buyback clause we are not doing that I can guarantee you Levy will not accept that any way shape or form if we're signing Brewster we're signing and there's no buyback clause in there Mm -hmm. so if they're if they're insistent on that this is the non-starter yeah I mean Rian Brewster I know he's a lot better uh, than what I'm about to say but it just reminds me a bit of a Fraser Campbell kind of deal Mm, maybe (laughs) yeah maybe I, I hope it's hard to be worse than Fraser Campbell, so I don't think he could be that bad, but uh, maybe. I, I, just don't, mean. I just don't really back him to hit the ground running. You know, I think Straight with Rian Brewster, I think it's going to be a slow burner. He's a young player as well, so... He might do well in Europa League. Maybe, maybe. Maybe he, he can play the Carabao Cup first two rounds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Game of Lane or in. Uh, but anyway, that is your Tottenham update today. We spoke about the return of Gareth Bale, the links between Pats and Daka and Milik, and as well, Rian Brewster of Liverpool. Let me know in the comment section below which striker would you like us to sign out of those lot. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.